Hi folks, this is a tutorial to show you how to create an animation in Adobe Photoshop. So uh, once, you, once you launch Photoshop, you want to go to File New, and then you just want to make sure the size is set to 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. Uh, you want to make sure this isn't set to inches or some other unit. Um, I've made the mistake of accidentally setting it to inches before and I ended up with a really giant document. So uh, make sure it's pixels 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. It's the same thing that we use in Toon Boom Harmony and it's 72 pixels per inch. And um, what else? So for background contents, I like to set it to transparent. That's just my personal preference. And then hit create. Okay, now we have a blank document, but where's our timeline? If you've ever used animation software, you know you need the timeline um, to make the drawings and make things move. So we're gonna come up to the window menu and choose timeline. And what that does is it docks or places this uh, timeline down in the bottom. And you have the ability at any point to make this taller or shorter. Um, when I'm drawing, I usually like to move the layers all the way down uh, to give me more room to draw. But if I'm looking at, you know, 20 layers, I want to have more room to move them around. So um, just know that if you hover over this center area, you can move them around. If your timeline ever accidentally gets undocked or is floating like this, you can actually quickly and easily fix it simply by hovering over the tab of the name timeline and drag it down to the bottom until you see it turn blue and then let go and that will redock it. So first you want to click create video timeline. Okay. And this turns that into a regular timeline, just like you would see in After Effects or Toon Boom Harmony or anything else. And this is our layer. And if you notice, there, well, there's a zoom in and zoom out slider, but there's also little mountains to help you zoom in and zoom out. And if you zoom all the way in, you can see the individual frames. So this is one frame, two frames, three frames, four frames. So what I like to do before I do anything whatsoever <clears throat> is I'll make typically like a background layer. So I'll call this background. And then I'm going to make, and I want the background to be as long as the whole project, just like in Harmony. Um, but then I want my animation layers, and I probably want those at least to start with to be on twos. So I'm going to click plus down at the bottom of the layers. And oh, do you see how where my playback head was? That's where it dropped the new layer. Um, but you can actually just quickly and easily drag and move, slide these around. Um, but again, this is just one little animation layer. I don't want it to be five seconds long. I want it to be two frames long. So if you hover over the end of it, you can actually trim it back. And then I need to zoom in again, just to see more detail. And oh, look at that, it's two frames long, which is perfect. Now, um, that took a little bit of work, right? I had to go new layer, and then I had to zoom out, and then I had to trim it, and then I had to zoom in to double check it. If you did that for every layer, it would take you a really long time. So what I do is I create the first layer and then I name it, so let's call it one. And then I just duplicate that layer so that it's all, so the new ones are also just two frames long. So if I right click, duplicate, and I'm just gonna call it two. Now I've got background one and two. And I don't know if you noticed, I haven't brought this up yet, but these layers up here are these layers down here. It's just a different graphical representation, okay? So then I'm going to right click again and I'm going to go up to eight. I'm going to keep creating layers. Just so you know, you do not have to create all of your layers in advance. Um, you do, um, you can add and subtract them whenever you want. I just like to get some of the work done in advance. Now, something I should have done before I even added these layers would be to come over here and double check that your frame rate is set to 24 frames per second. So there's this little menu over here. And if I go to set timeline frame rate, oh, it's set to 29.97. So let's change that to 24. Um, and now I'm going to show you something 
that I don't like about animating Photoshop is if you, this is why you want to set the frame rate first. So do you see how these are like one and a half frames long now, um, which is weird. So um, you can't, it's, you see what's happening when I drag them around too. I can't get them to line up next to each other, which is super frustrating. So I'm actually going to delete these. So, all right, let's try it again now that we're 24 frames per second really quickly. Zip it down. I'll try to recreate this as quickly as possible. Two, three, oops, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is this. You want to make sure that these aren't all happening at once, right? Because this animation, so you want to almost, I call it like stair-stepping them. Um, and this is very much what it looks like when you work in Adobe After Effects. Um, but some students don't like having this stair-step thing going on and they think it's annoying because it's just too many layers and they don't like having to scroll up and down. So another thing you can do once you've already made all the layers is this. You can just drag them all down into the same layer. And then what it does, and I'll show you when I'm done, is it automatically created something called a video group. So that's just really, it knows that it's animation, it groups them all together, no big deal. So what I've got now is eight frames that I can work with. Um, but what's cool is at any time, if I decide I want this drawing to be three frames long, okay, I just have to drag its end out and make it three frames long. So it kind of functions like After Effects or Premiere in that way. Or if you only want a drawing to be one frame long, just drag and trim it and make it shorter and then, um, and so on. So here we are in my background right now. I'm just going to paint bucket some light because I want to be able to see what I'm doing and I want you to be able to see it. Um, so I'll just do a quick, I don't know, maybe like a ball bounce. It's not going to be fantastic, but here we go. So I'm going to draw a squash drawing and then I'm going to go to the next one. And do you see how when I hover over, there's a little line through what should be the brush? That's because it, it's saying, hey, you need to let us know which frame you're drawing into. So I have to, I have to actually click on that particular drawing before I can draw into it. And now it will let me draw. But the next thing is, if you've been using any other animation software, you know you need onion skinning. So if you come over to this little menu again and enable onion skins, it will, when it's on the drawing, it will be black. When it's onion skin, it will get lighter and lighter. The problem is if I get even one frame away, it's gone. So I like to turn those settings up a little bit. So if I go to onion skin settings over in that same menu, you can say, I want to see, I don't want to see one frame before and after. I want to see three or maybe three after as well. And then you can click OK. And that allows you a little more flex as to where you have your cursor. Um, then I can go back and again, I have to click on the frame. Then I'll do a stretch drawing. Then I'm going to go to the next one. Click on it and and then I'm going to go to the next one. the next one and the next one. Now I'll start coming down again. And let me look back to see where I landed. I should have in the background put my, I should have put my guidelines in, right? So um, let me hide this for a second. Okay, it is separate. 
let me draw a guideline, but I'm going to use a different color just so I can tell the difference. There's the ground. Um, if you want it to be super, super straight, just hold down shift and drag and you'll get a straight line. I just feel like it's almost a little too straight. It looks a little computery. Um, so I've got my animation. Let's switch back. And if at any time you want to change the onion skinning, you can turn it off. So enable onion skins gone. So then you can just go through and look at your individual drawings if you want. Totally up to you. Let me turn it back on. I'm kind of flying blind here with this project. No guidelines or anything. This is terrible. All right, the next thing you want to do is if this is your whole project, um, look at your background and how long it is. So you want to zoom back out and trim it down so it's the same length as the animation. Okay, and now um, if you hit play, well, first of all, I think it's annoying that the onion and skinning is on. Um, and also spacebar is a hot key for start and stop. Come back over here, I'm gonna turn onion skins off because I want to see my terrible animation. Here it is, it's looping. If it's not looping, you can come into this little wheel here and make sure loop playback is checked. I think it's also important to make sure that resolution is set to 100%, otherwise when you hit play, it's gonna be blurry. Okay, if your computer is slow though, and your computer is struggling, lower it to 50, okay? It will look blurrier, um, but only while you're playing it, not while you're drawing, okay? So let's say I'm happy with this. <laughs> let's pretend this looks great. Um, and we're done. So maybe, well, first of all, we should be saving this. Save often, right? Ball, bounce, colosso. And make sure you save it as a Photoshop file. Um, otherwise, you're going to lose all your animation information. Okay, save. Now I need to not just only, to only save it. I can't upload this Photoshop file to YouTube. I, I have to export it. So you go to File, Export, Render Video. That's going to bring up a window where you can name it. And it's automatically going to name it the same name as your file. So if your file has a weird name, you can always change it. And then select folder. So you need to tell it where to go. Where do you want it to save? Um, how about the desktop? And then you can decide um, what format you want. But um, QuickTime or H actually H.264 is the native format to YouTube. So that's probably the best one to use. Um, you don't need to really worry about any of this other stuff yet. For this simple project, then hit render. And then it's going to take a minute, just like it does in Harmony. And we should be able to find our masterpiece now on the desktop. Here it is. And uh, now you have something that you can upload to YouTube. And hopefully it looks significantly better than this.